This man is Bellator's number three ranked bantamweight. Uh, he's flying to Japan to take on Ryzen's Bellator MMA versus Ryzen, a pretty cool event. He is Juan Archuleta. Thank you for joining me, man. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it, Jeremy. I don't know if you can tell, but voice, face, quite under the weather here. So I, I took some time out of the schedule uh, while I was laying on the couch in the background there, uh, sneezing. Hopefully I don't have to blow my nose during this interview. But I got to ask. That's the first thing I want to ask. I was supposed to compete in a jiu-jitsu tournament this weekend, actually. And the training hasn't been going to snuff because my nose has been snuffing like crazy. Uh, ever have any sickness or, or illnesses during fight camps that have that have been sort of detrimental to you? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, definitely uh, one time before I fought uh, for one of my first world titles uh, for Gladiator Challenge, I actually came out with a stomach flu and had like a 103 degree fever. And I went out there and fought anyway and ended up winning the fight, a very close fight. So it, it was definitely... Uh, a, a, a challenging fight. <laughs> Do you would you would you say that that uh, if it hadn't have been a title fight, it, it might have changed your mind in terms of uh, going into that fight? No, nah, no. Nah. I mean, I, there's there's any time I send the dotted line, I'm showing up for a fight, no matter what. Hundred percent. Uh, now this this fight takes place New Year's Eve, as I said. Um, before we get to this fight, I, I want to talk to you about this past weekend. Uh, we saw Danny Sabatello take on Rafian Stotts, and and we also saw Patchy Mix get the job done. They're going to be in the Grand Prix finale. Uh, but I think the biggest thing coming out of this was the decision in the uh, Sabatello and Stotts matchup. Were you did you have a chance to watch this fight? And were you surprised when you saw that Sabatello had it 50-45 on one of the judges' scorecards? No, not at all. If you go through and you watch a lot of the... See, that, that, that's the problem with a lot of people that just watch it and think that they know how to judge a fight. Like, you also got to understand who's judging your fight. Uh, when it comes to martial arts, the reason why there's so much what people call inconsistency in um, judging is because martial arts is kickboxing, boxing, wrestling, jiu-jitsu, you have all these different martial arts that are out there and judges favor some more than others. Some judges favor offense more than defense. Some judges are going to favor defense more than offense. So there is a lot of inconsistency on a, on what you would say a judging criteria. But at the end of the day, you can't blame the judges for the way they decided to judge a fight when you're not out there putting offense together. That's why for me, I try to put as much offense together as I can. So if I do lose the decision, I was like, well, whatever, you know, I put as much offense as I can and gave myself the best opportunity to win a fight that I could in order to win that fight in my in my understanding of martial arts. So if I'm if I put out more martial arts than my opponent, I expect to win the fight. But if I sit there and play defensive like most of the guys do, like for instance, Stotts and Salvatello is a perfect example. Doug Crosby said, okay, I want to see offense out there. I want to see someone go after it, which Sabatello had, what, 16 to 14 takedown attempts. You yeah. know, what, it, what was, what was uh, Stotts doing that whole time that uh, Sabatello was shooting? He was defending. So are you going to reward a defensive team for stopping something and then – Sabatello gets more takedowns than Stotts, has more control time than Stotts, you know, and, uh, you know, then you start looking at the punch count. Okay, then you start judging the punch count. Okay, well, Sab Stotts had more, uh, a higher punch count than Sabatello. That's why the other judges have gave it to Stotts. So that's why, you know, you can't really blame the judging at all. All, Stott, all Sabatello had to do was punch five times every 20 seconds, and he would have won the fight with the control, you know, so... It's hard when when fighters don't give the judges enough offense and enough um, uh, techniques out there to judge to judge on how good they are. Like Stotts is very good, and he could put some a little more offense together, and he could put um, his wrestling and his. If he's such a great wrestler, then go out there and show it. If you're such a great striker, go out there and show it. Don't be so defensive, but you're fighting to not to not lose. And so some judges discourage that and they show it in their judging. So, um, so that's my opinion on judging. You can't be offended when you lose a fight. 
if you didn't get the finish. And then you can't be offended by the way the judge chose to win the fight because that's their interpretation of how to win a fight. How did you score the fight then? I had it for the offensive guy. I'll always score it more for the offensive guy. And I felt like Sabatello did do enough to win the fight. But, you know, you look at the control time. You look at the damage. No one really damaged each other. First and foremost is damage and knockdowns, right? Like, yeah. who had the most damage and who had the most knockdowns? Neither of them. Okay, then who had the most control time in that fight? You know, and so you look at the next uh, criteria, at least for I do. And so I thought Stotts did enough to win. I mean, Sabatello did enough to win the fight. But I do agree it was a very close fight and it could have gone either way. Where you see a guy that flew under the... And, and you kind of knew that that was going to happen. That was going to be the style of fight. Just because both those guys were running their mouths so much that it's like, okay, this is going to be a boring fight. You could tell <laughs> by the way they're just trash talking. Like, this is not going to be a real fight. And then I knew that the fight that, that was going to be a real fight was going to be the Magomedov and Patchy fight. Because Bogomedov, you know, he obviously got lit up his last fight on, on the feet by, by um, Barzola. So his, his, his stand-up was going to be a little bit questionable. So he had to show, go out there and mix up his wrestling to try to uh, prove his stand-up. Well, you don't do that with a guy with Patchy, and Patchy made him pay for it. And I, I felt like that fight flew under the radar under a lot of the media eye, and it should have got more recognition. Definitely. Now, you, you said right at the beginning of that answer that uh, you have to do sort of, you have to look at what the judges are, what they're scoring it. You know the judges that are around there. Does that mean you do homework on certain judges? Yeah, you have to, man. You have to know who's judging your fight. If you're, if you're going into a fight, like, <laughs> dude, you better study more than just thinking you're going to go out there and fight and win. Like, I was the only fighter that, that logged in into the Risen um, rules when, when, I, when we had a, at 6 o'clock in the morning, L.A. time, I had to log on and I had to go and see, uh, they were giving the rules breakdown and the dredging criteria. I was the only fighter on there because I want to know how they're going to judge this fight and I want to know the rules for the fight because I'm educating myself on what I'm getting ready to do. Like, I'm not just going to play by ear and say, okay, I'm going to just show up and think I know the rules. Like, you have to sit there through these rule meetings and understand what you're getting yourself into. You Definitely. Know? You're a guy who's been in the game a long time, so obviously that plays a part into it. As we said, Bellator MMA versus Ryzen, New Year's Eve, you'll take on Su Chol Kim. Uh, very interesting matchup, two former champions. Uh, what do you think this fight itself does for you in terms of the Bellator rankings? Because obviously this guy isn't under the Bellator promotion. Do you think it sets you up for 2023 with a bang or what? Yeah, I mean, right now it doesn't look like I'll get a title fight until um, I'm guessing the end of next year. Granted, I win all my fights, so... Right now, it's just chipping away slowly. Um, you know, I'm, I would definitely want to stay active. I'm not going to stay sidelined. That's for sure. I've been voice. I've been voicing my opinion about that. Like, I want to be able to fight three to four times a year, and so that leads me going perfect into the end of the year, fighting for the title, letting this Grand Prix final play out, and then letting the letting the unification of the title happen. Unless Sergio wants to fight the night of the the Grand Prix final, I'll, 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 I'll fight all day, you know, but I don't think he's willing to do that. And I don't think Bellator is willing to do that. So I think they want the winner out of this uh, um, uh, Grand Prix to fight Sergio, which is fine. Uh, so I'll just fight whoever they put in front of me, just keep me busy. And I'm, I, I want to be active in the Bantamweight division. When you found out about this fight, obviously, New Year's Eve, it's over the holidays. Uh, how difficult is it to, you know, prepare yourself for something that's happening after Christmas, the holidays, whatnot? It's on New Year's Eve. you got to fly to Japan with a family and friends. Uh, does that sort of play into your mindset? No, nah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm actually leaving this Monday out there, and so my whole family's coming with me. I'm super excited. When I heard the news that I was going out there, I was stoked. I was ecstatic. I wanted to fight for Ryzen for quite some time since I started my career in King of the Cage. And every year I would uh, I would reach out to Terry Treblecock, who runs uh, King of the Cage, and I was asking, hey, man, can you put me on the Risen card? Can you put me on the Risen card? And he would try and try and try and kept getting turned down. Well, now there's no denying it. Now I'm going finally going out there and having my opportunity, and I'm going to take uh, the utmost respect and, and eagerness towards it and go put on a performance 
performance for the fans because this is where you leave a mark in history of sports. You know, not only are we going to be the first promote, the first two promotions to go promoter against promoter and fighter versus fighter, but uh, I get to do what I've always wanted to do, and that's go in Japan and put on a performance and get to show pay homage to the warriors that came before me. So I'm super excited on that. Definitely. It's got to be super cool to fight in the Saitama Super Arena. It's obviously where, you know, all the big promotions back in the day happened, uh, the Pride Grand Prix and all that kind of stuff. So it's got to be sort of surreal to be able to fight in there. You said you're heading out next Monday. Uh, that's obviously to get acclimated and whatnot. Uh, do you plan on, you know, rummaging around Tokyo or, or around Japan before, you know, getting set on the ground and, and ready to fight? Um, so when we went and promoted the fight, I got to do that first and foremost. And nice. Understand the culture, understand the Bushido code, and understand, you know, just the people there and what they're looking for. And I have a great idea. And I even got to walk in a couple of the gyms and train with some Japanese fighters out there. You know, just walk in and say, hey, can I train? They're like, hell yeah, let's do it. So <laughs> got to get a feel for the Asian style of martial arts. So I'm super excited to go forward and leave my mark there. I know this is going to be a busy media day for you. I'll ask you the one question that everybody else is going to ask you to end this thing off. New Year's Eve, how do you get your hand raised? 15 minutes of pain, man. I'm, I'm going to spend every moment I can inside that ring and just bask in it because I never know if I'm going to be able to do it again uh, unless he quits. Uh, I'm not going to let him out of there easy. You know, I'm just going to either he quits or the judges know that pure domination came from the Spaniard and I'm there to do that. Juan Archuleta, good luck on New Year's Eve, my friend. Enjoy the trip. Safe travels. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it.